Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me here today. In today's episode, we are going to be running through the SAT's toughest data and statistics problems. Yes, it's right there on the screen. You see it. I just said it. That's what we're going to be doing. I hope these videos are helpful for you. Let me know down in the comments down below uh, how I can improve, what can be better. Let's get started. All right, let's see our first problem. The first term of sequence is the number n, and each term thereafter is five greater than the term before. Which of the following is the average or arithmetic mean of the first nine terms of this sequence? Okay, so what do we have? We have, we have nine terms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're starting with n, and then we're going to increase by five each time. So this is going to be n plus five, n plus ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty will be our last. And what do we want to know? We want to know the arithmetic mean. So what is the mean? The mean is whenever you add up all your terms and then divide by the number of terms you have. Okay, so we, we could totally do that, but something I always tell my students is please, 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 please don't do unnecessary math, and especially with the SAT, the, the test designers, they're designing these questions to be solved in a minute or less. So. So adding up all these numbers might not be the best way to solve this problem. Uh, something I'm noticing here is we're increasing by the same increment each time, in this case five. And if we look at our, our lowest term and our highest term, so we have zero and 40, the, the mean, the middle number is 20. If we look at five and 35, the middle number, again, if we take the mean of 5 and 35, we get 20. And the median itself is going to be 20. Uh, so our average, if we add everything up and then divide by 9, since, we're, since our increments, since each step is increasing by the same amount, our mean is going to be the same as our median. And Therefore, we know that our answer is going to be a n plus 20. Again, you can go ahead and add everything up. We can have 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20, etc., etc., etc. And whenever we do that, I believe we'll get 9n, because we have an n in each term, plus 180. And then you would divide by 9. These 9s cancel. 180 divided by 9 is 20 and so you're left with n plus 20 and so you're gonna get the correct answer a regardless but I want to point out to you these these little tricks these little tips so that you can go faster because I, I really do think the hardest thing about the SAT is the time so there's a little hint for you Let, let's go on to the next problem let's check it out all right let a B and C be positive integers if the average arithmetic mean of A, B, and C is 100, which of the following is not a possible value for any of these integers? Okay, so we're told that A, B, and C are all positive integers, and we're told that the mean is 100. So what do we know? We know that A plus B plus C divided by 3 equals 100. So we know a plus b plus c must equal 300. And then what's, what's the question asking us again? It's asking us which of the following is not a possible value for any of the integers, given that a, b, and c are all positive. All right, well, here we're, we need to kind of look at our answer choices. And e is definitely popping out at me. If one of our values is 299, then even if b and c are both 1, the smallest possible positive integer, then this sum is going to equal 301, which exceeds our limit of 300. Uh, therefore, no, none, none of our values, a, b, or c, could be e, 299. So this must be our answer. All right, that, that was a good one. Let's, let's continue forward. 
Number three, m is a set consisting of a finite number of consecutive integers. If the median of the numbers in set m is equal to one of the numbers in set m, which of the following must be true? Okay, so what do we, we have some set m, and we know it consists of a finite number of consecutive integers, finite number of consecutive integers, so, so I'm just gonna make a little mock example. Okay, I'll say one, two, and three. These, this is a finite set of consecutive integers. If the median, okay, if the medium of the numbers in set M is equal to one of the numbers in set M, so, so what is this little sentence telling us? If the median uh, of set M is equal to one of the numbers in set M. Okay, so this is a little sentence explaining what? Uh, it's saying our median must be a value in our set. Our middle number must be a value in our set. In our example set, 1, 2, and 3, our median is 2, and 2 is in our set, so this would work out. But what if our example set was 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, then our median, in this case, our median would equal 2 and a half. It would fall right between 2 and 3. And two and a half is not an integer, so so in this case, it would not be in our set. So that's something we need to keep in mind. Okay, so let's read these uh, bullet points one, two, and three. So number one, the average arithmetic mean of the numbers in set M is equal to the median. All right, well this reminds me of problem one that we just did, where we saw that the median and the mean are, are, are the same. So is that the case for this as well? Is that the case for this as well? Maybe. Let's let's think about it in a little bit. Let's look at number two. The numbers of the the number of numbers in set M is odd. Okay. And number three, the sum of the smallest number and the largest number in set M is even. Okay. Let's look at number two first. The number of numbers in set M is odd. Well, this sentence, this middle sentence that I just explained earlier, if the median of the numbers in set M is equal to one of the numbers in set M, that just showed us that our median number needs to be an integer. And the only way for that to happen is if we have an odd number of numbers in our set M. Uh, therefore, number two must be true. Number two must be true. Okay. Let's look, at, let's look at number one again. The average of arithmetic mean of the numbers in set M equals the median. Well, just as we looked at in problem number one, we have, what do we have? We have consecutive integers. We have numbers like one, two, three, four, five, etc. And so, yes, the, the mean is gonna be equal to the median in this case, that's just, that's just how it works. And here, here's another example, and let's calculate it super fast. One plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15, divided by five is three. So our mean is three, and then also we can see our median is three. Now this isn't a proof by any means, this is just one example, but we can see that it holds. So we're gonna say one is also true. And now let's think of three. The sum of the smallest number and the largest number is even. Okay, well the smallest number will be our first and the largest will be our last. And so we have two possibilities. We can either have two odd numbers and an odd plus an odd is an odd. Or we could have the other case, an even plus an even and an even plus an even number is an even. So all three of these statements, one, two, and three, are true. So this answer is E. Excellent, excellent. Let's see our last problem. The average or arithmetic mean of a particular set of seven numbers is 12. When one of the numbers is replaced by the number six, the average of the set increases to 15. What is the number that was replaced? Okay, so this problem might seem scary, but I hope, I hope 
that you guys can all solve it. So what I always suggest is just start writing down what you know and hopefully what you're supposed to do will just jump out at you. So what do I know? I know we have seven numbers. So I have seven numbers and so so let's actually write it this way. So I have like number one plus number two plus number three etc et to number seven and if I divide them all by 7, I get an average of 12. Okay, so this tells me if I add all my 7 numbers, so n1 plus n2, etc. again, this needs to equal 84. And then what am I told? I'm told if I replace one of my numbers with the value 6, the average increases to 15. Okay, so whenever I change one of my numbers out, my new set of numbers, so this will be, M will represent my new set of numbers, M1, M2, etc. Whenever they're all added up, they're going and divided by 7, we get 15. Okay, and 7 times 15 is, I believe, 105. So let me do some erasing. So this new set sums to 105. So what do I have here? I have my old set of numbers, this N1, N2, etc. And I have my new set of numbers, the M1, M2, etc. And I know what they sum to. I don't know their individual values, but I do know what they sum to. I know my original set sums to 84, and I know my new set sums to 105. And so how can this information be valuable in, in our solution? Well, it's valuable because we know all of our numbers are identical except for one. We only changed one number, and we changed it to the number 6. So in our new set, in our M's, we have a 6 somewhere. The only new value is some n change to an m, and that m value is 6. And changing it to a 6 did what? Well, it increased, it increased the sum of our numbers from 84 to 105. So 84 plus what number equals 105? Well, 84 plus 21 equals 105. Again, we know that our new number is 6, therefore, what we can do is we can just take 6 and subtract 21, so 6 minus 21, and we get negative 15. So that's telling us that we had to have changed a negative 15 to a positive 6 in order to have a 21, uh, a 21 increase to get from 84 to 105 so that our average changed from 12 to 15. Therefore, B is our answer in this problem. Okay, guys, that was the last of these data and statistics problems. I, these were, I, I, it's hard for me to say. I, I don't think the math is challenging for any of these, but I do think that knowing how to set these problems up and what to do can sometimes be challenging. So I hope I did a good job of explaining. Please let me know down in the comments below how I can improve and what you would like to see from me. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and until next time, take care everybody.